Fire department? This is Lock Raven Kiwanis Swim Club. We, we have a chlorine gas emergency. Yes, at the bottom of Collinsdale Road. Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. What happened? What happened? Bums! Bums! Gary's in the house. Yeah, they're dead. Gary, 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 Chief, we have a chlorine emergency down there in the white building. Okay, we'll take care of it. Thank you. What kind of fatal? You see the people down there, Chris, they're really sick. Gas gets in you, that's really serious. Okay, fellas, we've got a chlorine leak. Three men with air packs, bag of small tools. Follow me. All right. It's really... Mm. Battalion Chief 9 to communications. Battalion Chief 9? I have a chlorine leak at the 6700 block of Lock Lane Boulevard, Kiwanis Swim Club, four to five casualties. Let me have an ambulance. Ambulance on its way, Battalion Chief 9. Yeah, we have a leak here, George. Bring in the ammonia. Okay, right, here it comes. All right, here you go. Let's 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 go. let us there she goes. All right. Two up, down, up here. I don't think they're too bad at all. There's only the one. Boys and girls, you can all go back in the pool now. The emergency's over. Walk, 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 Hello, I'm Captain Les Helfrick of the Balmer City Fire Department. We staged a gas leak in cooperation with the Chlorine Institute to give some of our firefighters actual experience in handling chlorine emergencies. Don, you're the manager here. I understand one of your employees placed the alarm yesterday. Yes, sir. Could you tell us what happened? Well, Rocky went down to change the tank, and he must not have closed the gas off completely. The gas started coming out, he dropped his wrench, and he but you couldn't find it. By the time I got there, I couldn't get to the gas mask. If you could have reached the valve, do you know how to shut it off? Yes, sir. 
I have a few suggestions to make because of what happened here yesterday. Well, I'm glad you're here. First of all, try and make your cylinder changes when guests are not using the pool. And as you mentioned, have a mass readily available. How about a brief plan of action? Who does what, when, where? We practice emergency drills once in a while. That's good. Well, I might suggest if you're having problems with employees knowing about chlorine, have you ever thought of using bleach solution or a dry chlorine compound? Yes, sir. And thanks for the rest of the suggestions. Thanks, Dime. And the fact remains that chlorine emergencies today are relatively rare, and when they do occur, are handled rather fast. This is due to certain standards and practices. Here's an industry expert to tell us more of this. Right, Captain Halfrick, and it just didn't happen overnight. It took us a good many years. I'm Milt Nelson, and I work for a company which is a member of the Chlorine Institute. Modern industry today uses a lot of materials potentially more hazardous than chlorine. Our few are as widely used as chlorine. And because of this, the industry has become very safety conscious. Back in 1926, we began the standardization of valves and fittings for containers. And later, we designed emergency kits to control leaks. For 40 years, the industry has informally responded to chlorine emergency situations. And in 1973, we formalized this into the Chlorep plan a plan where about 60 chlorine emergency teams are located in the United States and Canada and are on a 24-hour alert basis for responding to emergency situations. We have continued to improve the safety features of containers. Also, we prepare bulletins, film strips, wall charts, and films for our customers. However, and unfortunately, there is always the human element. Chlorine emergencies can happen, and they do. And that's when you will get the telephone call. Because every community instinctively turns to the firefighters because of their training and experience in using emergency equipment. You're right, Milt. Let's say the main objectives of this film are to give the firefighter a working knowledge of what chlorine is, what a chlorine emergency might involve, how a company can plan ahead, and finally, to show how a chlorine emergency can be handled safely. Let's start here in a chlorine control lab. We will demonstrate some of the properties of chlorine. Chlorine is a chemical element, and most people know that it's used to purify water. You can buy it as laundry bleach. However, these are minor uses for chlorine. Most chlorine is used to produce plastics, synthetic fibers, and solvents, and a lot is used to bleach paper. Now, Captain Helfrich has asked us to demonstrate some of the properties of chlorine that might relate to the emergency situations that you firefighters might encounter. Ken, you're in charge of the lab. What can we show these people? Well, first thing you notice about chlorine is that it smells. And to put it bluntly, it smells like hell. But realistically, it smells like laundry bleach. And in stronger concentrations, it's more pungent and irritating. You'll know it when you smell it. Let's show them a few things, Ken. The first thing you can see about chlorine is that it's a gas. We've got a small cylinder of chlorine here, and I'm going to open the valve up and let some of the gas escape. Under the lab hood, you can see that at low concentrations, chlorine is virtually colorless. Ken will connect the tube to a flask. And as the gas passes into it, you can see the yellowish green color. This is typical of chlorine in higher concentrations that could be fatal. Chlorine gas is easily compressed into a liquid. And since 460 volumes of gas become one volume of liquid, chlorine is usually stored and shipped in containers as a liquefied gas under pressure. You may never see liquid chlorine, but here's what it looks like. As a gas, chlorine is about two and a half times as heavy as air. So when it escapes, it tends to settle in low spots like basements, elevator shafts, or pits. To detect chlorine, you can use ammonia. In the presence of water, chlorine corrodes most metals.
chlorine is neither explosive nor flammable, but it can react with hot steel or powdered metals. And with hydrocarbons, like turpentine, it can react violently. Now, what about the medical facts? Hello, I'm Dr. Ned Plunkett of Occupational Health Services in Barberton, Ohio. I'm here with you today in the emergency room of a large metropolitan hospital. The equipment that you see in the background is equipment found in most large emergency rooms, not essentially different from that which you have available to you. Chlorine has produced fear in the mind of the public for many years. I'd like to review some of the simple medical facts with you. First, take the odor of chlorine. You can smell chlorine at a very, very low level. To be scientific, the odor threshold amounts to one-third of a part per million in air, and that much chlorine cannot do any harm. If the concentration is 50 times greater, the odor will be quite pronounced. It will be so strong, as a matter of fact, that you would not deliberately stay in such an area. You'd want to get out but it will do no harm. Some people panic when they even hear the word chlorine. But unlike many other gases, the effects of chlorine and its symptoms are completely reversible. For instance, if you breathe too much chlorine, you'll cough and cry and your nose will run. You may even develop some burning pain in your chest. But if you cover your nose and mouth with a handkerchief, hold your breath as much as you can and walk away from the gas area, you'll be perfectly all right. If you see someone collapsed in the gas area, put your breathing apparatus on and remove him to fresh air. Keep him lying down, warm and comfortable. If you stop breathing, start artificial respiration. And if you have oxygen, by all means, use it. If his skin or his eyes have been burned with chlorine, irrigate them well with plenty of water. If his clothing is contaminated, take it off and cover him with a blanket. And then if his exposure to chlorine has been serious, get him to a physician. But above all, remember to keep him comfortable and at rest. These two simple treatments alone will help him recover surprisingly fast. Well, there are five standard types of chlorine containers. These are chlorine cylinders. This is a 100 pound cylinder. This is a 150 pounder. This is a chlorine ton container. This is a chlorine tank car. This is a chlorine tank trailer. And this is a chlorine barge. But the odds are, the chlorine emergencies that you will encounter will involve cylinders. And the reason for this is that there are more cylinders in use today than all other chlorine containers combined. The word chlorine is stenciled on the side of the cylinder. The cylinder is also identified by this green chlorine tag. The tag is torn in half when the cylinder is empty. However, always remember that the cylinder may still contain chlorine. Chlorine cylinders are stored and transported in an upright position. This is a threaded hood, and it's used to protect the Chlorine Institute cylinder valve. The valve outlet is protected by an outlet cap, and this special wrench is used to open this cap. The wrench is also used to open and close the cylinder valve. The valve body contains a safety device called a fusible plug. The fusible metal melts about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This safety device keeps the cylinder from rupturing because of high pressure caused from heat. So to keep the fusible plug from melting, keep the cylinder cool. Since all chlorine cylinders are standardized, we have designed an emergency kit for controlling leaks. We call this the Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit A, and it contains three main devices for stopping leaks a clamp for fusible plugs, a hood for valves, 
and a patch for side leaks. You can divide emergencies involving chlorine cylinders into three main categories, around warehouses, in transit, or at the swimming pool. At the pool, the usual leaks are in the lines, connectors, or devices attached to the chlorine cylinder, not in the cylinder itself. Check first to make sure that the main valve is closed. Any chlorine remaining in the lines is then less of a problem. And never roll a chlorine cylinder with a leaking valve into the pool. You can only make the leak worse. In a warehouse or at a loading dock, you have a problem if the fire is near the cylinders. Either move them or apply water to them. Right, seven engine, let's move those lines in. Pull those tanks down, babe. Okay, here comes the other line. Move it down. Move it down. Come on, truck, let's get up here. Charles, as soon as they're cool enough, move them. Wet those down again, Lieutenant. Wet them down. Okay, start moving them out, babe. See how much fire we got here. Okay, nice piece of work. That one. Keep them rolling. Watch their feet. There you go. Can you handle this? I'm going to check on the other side, see how much fire we got here. Okay, keep it moving, babe. Keep it moving. Keep it cool. That was a loose cap on it. How you doing? Okay, okay, stay with it, babe. That's it, keep it up high, babe. Got anything up there? Okay, Tom. There you go. Take that. Oh, okay, is that a bigger one? Are they in the cooler? Try to get them over as far as you can. Let's take them from this end. Back your lines out. Okay, hold it. I think they're cool enough now, aren't they? Where you can touch them by hand. Yeah, they're okay. Okay, nice piece of work. Chlorine ton containers are shipped, stored, and used in the horizontal position. The word chlorine is stenciled on the side of the ton container. This green tag identifies its contents. This hood is used in shipment to protect these valves. The valves are connected to pipes inside the ton container and reach the edge of the ton container. When the valves are in a vertical position, the upper valve is connected to chlorine gas and the lower valve is connected to liquid chlorine. Now, if you happen to see liquid chlorine dripping from a valve, try to turn the ton container so that that valve is at the top in this position, then it will leak only chlorine gas. The leakage of liquid chlorine is particularly hazardous because one cubic inch of liquid chlorine will give approximately 460 cubic inches of chlorine gas. Chlorine ton container valves are standardized. They're almost like cylinder valves, except they do not have fusible plugs on the valve. Instead, there are six separate fusible plugs on the ton container three on this head and three on the other head. And these fusible plugs melt at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. They are to protect the ton container from rupture because of high pressure caused by excessive heat. So keep the ton container cool. Sometimes you may see chlorine ton containers shipped on trucks like this or on multi-unit cars. There is a standardized emergency kit for controlling chlorine ton container leaks. It's called the Emergency Kit B. It contains a hood for valves, a clamp for fusible plugs, and a patch for side leaks. There are two kinds of emergencies you may encounter which involve the ton containers. 
The first kind is at waterworks or waste disposal plants. Usually the leak is in the gaskets or the lines connected to the containers. By shutting off the main control valve to the ton container, any chlorine remaining in the line will be less of a problem. The second kind of incident involves ton containers in warehouses. If exposed to a fire, keep them cool with a water spray from a fog nozzle or applicator, or even roll them out of the way. One word of caution, though. Even an empty ton container weighs approximately 1,600 pounds. Rolling uncontrolled, it could be a hazard to personnel or equipment in the area. This is a chlorine tank car. You can identify it by the word chlorine only, stenciled on the side of the car. You can also identify it by the word chlorine on the placard. And this is the identification number for the car. The dome housing contains five valves. The valves parallel to the length of the car unload liquid chlorine. These two valves are connected to the gas space. This is a safety relief valve. It relieves excess pressure in the car because of heat input. However, it closes after the gas pressure is reduced. Since the valves in the housing are standardized, we have designed an emergency kit for controlling leaks. We call it the Emergency Kit C. It contains a hood for leaking angle valves, a cap for leaking safety relief valves, and a hood for leaking safety relief valves. If a chlorine car is derailed, always check it for leaks. If a leak is found, no water. Evacuate the area as conditions may require. Take into consideration wind direction. Call Chemtrack or TEEP immediately for a chlorine emergency team and be prepared to give the car serial number. Even with four inches of cork insulation, a chlorine car exposed to a fire should be kept cool with water spray or move it out of the fire area. Keep that far away from that car there, Jack. You away. That's it. Keep that tank cool. Huh? Can we move this car out of here? Get it back my here right away. Good enough. Keep it up there. Keep her on the top of the dome. Where's the mover at? Who's gonna move this car, George? Okay. I'll keep her on top of that dome. Keep it on it, though. Get it out. Keep it on it, though. Keep it on it, though. Watch yourself there. Watch it. Take it away. Watch yourself there. Okay. Good enough, good enough, Hawk. Okay, wet it all down, Bert. Wet it up, Hawk.
And finally, there are two other types of chlorine shipping containers, the chlorine tank trailer and the chlorine barge. However, there are so few of these in use today that most firefighters will never see one. You can identify the chlorine tank trailer by the dome at the top and the valves inside. These are identical to those used on chlorine tank cars. And you can identify the tank trailer by the word chlorine stenciled on the side. And every tank trailer carries an emergency kit C. Barge regulations are very strict and only trained men may load and unload chlorine barges. Chlorine barges operate in very few parts of the country, on the Mississippi and some of its tributaries, along the Gulf Coast and on the Pacific Northwest Coast. If your department is located along one of these waterways, write the Chlorine Institute for more information. Members of a chlorine emergency team will give you immediate advice on the telephone, and if their presence seems necessary, they will come to your aid as fast as possible. Incidentally, if you wish to contact a chlorine emergency team for advanced planning, call the Chlorine Institute. The key to this is advanced planning. Make sure that your department is prepared. Through pre-fire planning, know where chlorine is used and stored. Make sure that the chlorine user has an emergency plan of his own. Here in Baltimore, we have a lot of industry and railroads. We require all three kits. The A kit for cylinders, the B kit for ton containers, and the C kit for tank cars and trucks. Your department might not require all three kits, but you should know where to obtain them. And remember, the firefighter's best protection is a self-contained mask with full protective clothing. And remember to put on the mask prior to entering the contaminated area. It's through advanced planning and the intelligent use of the safety practices and procedures that you have seen today that the firefighter can get the edge on handling chlorine emergencies. Thank you.